रामाय राम भद्राय रामचंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय फते ए नम अयोध्या कांड चैप्टर नंबर सेवेंटी फाइव भारत इन द प्रीवियस कपल ऑफ चैप्टर्स भारत टेल्स कई very emphatically that he is not going to usurp his brother's throne and he is going to go to the forest and entreat rama to return to ayodhya it is one thing to say something behind closed doors and it is another thing to prove your innocence to the rest of the world bharata's trials have already started the first trial was the calamities that he faced and then the temptation to rule a very opulent city which never even entered his mind but the rest of the world needs a proof of his innocence therefore great personalities and great devotees such as kaushalya vashishta bharatwaj guha all of them test bharata and bharata proves that he is beyond all reproach In this chapter we are going to see Bharata prove to Mother Kaushalya that he is completely innocent and he had no part whatsoever in Kaikeyi's fiendish schemes verse 1 Dirgha kalat samuttaya sanjam labdh cha viryavan netrabhyam अश्रुपूर्णाभ्याम दीन मुद्विक्ष्य मातरम आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग टाइम भारत रिगेन्ड हिज कॉन्शियसनेस ही लुक्ड एट हिज मदर हूज आईज व फिल्ड विद टीयर्स देर आर टू वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट्स ऑफ अर फर्स्ट वन इज वाल्मीकि कॉल्स भारत एज एक्सट्रीमली वैलियंट because in the previous chapter valmiki closed with the information that bharata lost his consciousness and now we learn that after a long time deedga khalat after a long time bharata regains his senses valmiki wants us to know that bharata did not faint from fear or lack of courage or something like that the reason why he fainted was his excessive love towards rama that he couldn't bear the separation from rama and he couldn't believe that it was his own mother who caused the separation from rama the second important point is valmiki just hints at the remorse of kaiki So for two chapters Bharata has been rebuking Kaiki and now we see that Netra Bhyam Ashrupurna Bhyam her eyes were filled with tears This indicates the remorse of Kaiki She doesn't specifically say that she is sorry for her actions we just know that she is remorseful because of the term Netra Bhyam Ashrupurna Bhyam Now in the meanwhile Sumantra and the other ministers sought him out here because they are informed of his arrival and we see verse 2 So amatya madhye bharato jananim abhyakut sayat rajyam na kamaye jatu mantre napi mataram Bharata reproaches his mother in the midst of the ministers and says Never for a single moment did my heart hanker after this kingdom nor did I at any time seek her infernal advice towards it Why does Bharata start off with explaining that he had nothing to do with Kaikeyi's plans why because he has this desire to clear himself in the eyes of all blame or complicity therefore he says that he had nothing to do with kaiki's plans and he never even wanted the kingdom verse 3 abhishekam na janami yo bud ragnya samikshita 
विप्रकृष्टे हयाम देशे शत्रुघ्नो सहितो आवसम I was in the far away capital of my grandsire with Shatrughna and was all ignorant of my father's resolve to crown me as the heir apparent verse 4 Banavasam na janami Ramasya ham mahatmana vivasanam va somitre Sita yascha yata bhavat I was not aware of the banishment of the high-souled Rama or that Sita and Lakshmana had accompanied him. Verse 5 Tataiva Kroshata Tasya Bharatasya Mahatmanaha Kaushalya Shabdam Agnana Sumitram Idam Abravi recognizing the voice of the high souled bharata as crying out in that manner kaushalya spoke the following words to sumitra a very interesting point over here in the previous verse bharata called rama as mahatmana and here kaushalya thinks of bharata as mahatmana or the high souled one the great one the magnanimous one this should be enough proof that even though kaushalya knows that bharata is great she is going to test him just so that the rest of the world also understands his magnanimity and his greatness so it's not as if kaushalya personally doubted bharata she wants the world to know who bharata is In Valmiki Ramayana whenever great people including Rama speak some seemingly harsh words it is not actually harsh it is to glorify the other person at the first glance those words are very harsh but then we need to understand the motive behind those words as well verse 6 आगत क्रूर कार्याय कैकेय भरत सुत तम अहम द्रष्ट इच्छा भरत दीर्घदर्शिना भरत द सन ऑफ कैके द डूर ऑफ टेरबल डीड्स हेज अराइव्ड आई वॉन्ट टू सी दैट फार साइटेड भरत Mother Kaushalya packs in a lot of information in just this one adjective that she gives Bharat Dirgha Darshina the far sighted the one who is able to see far into the future and far into the past as a person who can see far into the past Kaushalya knows that Bharata is well aware of everything that has transpired in the kingdom of Ayodhya when he was away at Kekaya kingdom and Bharata is capable of seeing who is truly at fault as a dirgadarshana as a person who is able to see far into the future Bharata knows what is ultimately good for him. What is ultimately good for any living entity is to forge the bond with Sita Rama. So Bharata as a far-sighted person will never do anything that will jeopardize his relationship with Rama. And Rama has already mentioned that he does not like Artha and Kama. Kaushalya thinks that Bharata is Mahatmana a high souled person does not succumb to material greed and desire thus with two adjectives Mahatmana and Dirgha Darshana Mother Kaushalya indicates to the readers exactly what she thinks of Bharat She gives the clue that she knows that Bharata is completely innocent. She gives us the clue that she knows that Bharata will never go against Rama because that is for his own benefit. Basically, every living entity is benefited 
if it recognizes the relationship that it constantly has with Sita and Rama. Therefore, Kaushalya says that this is Dirga Darshana Bharata. And even though he is the son of Kaiki, the doer of cruel deeds, Krura Karyaya, it is evident that Kaushalya knows that Bharata has not inherited the cruelty, the meanness, the greed and selfishness that characterize Kaikei. There is also another import to it. Just because the parents are cruel, it doesn't mean that the children cannot be devotees. That is not true at all. Hiranyakashipu was a very cruel person, but his son Prahlad is a great devotee of the Lord. Similarly, Kaiki became very cruel and selfish, but her son Bharata continued to serve Rama with unstinted, unalloyed devotion. Therefore, the second meaning here is that the child of non-devotees does not have to remain a devotee. That child can become a devotee at any time. Because the Lord's mercy is not barred to any race or region or geography or age or gender. It does not have any bars. Even animals and birds love Rama and Sita. Therefore, the family does not really determine the circumstances of any living entity. Vibhishna came from a family of demons and yet he was a great devotee. Mother Kaushalya also says that she wants to see Bharata. Tamaham drashtum ichami. I wish to see Bharata. And who is that Bharata? That Bharata is Dirgadarshina. And she is waiting to see Bharata for a particular reason. So based on the timeline, Rama went to the forest the day after his 25th birthday. Six days later, Dashrata passed away. The messengers of Sage Vashishta arrived at Girivraja very quickly. So let's say it's about three to four days or so. And Bharata took seven days to return from Girivraja to Ayodhya. So everything put together, it's been at least a fortnight since Rama went to the forest. Till King Dashrata was alive, Kaushalya had the dharma of a wife and she had to serve King Dashrat. But now she is a widow, her son is not with her, her daughter-in-law is also not with her. Kaushalya has nothing to do but to think about Rama constantly. Therefore, she is waiting for Bharata to arrive so that she can see another son of hers. She has to prove to the world that Bharata is completely innocent. As well as there is this one small hope that Bharata would send her to the forest to stay with Rama, Sita and Lakshmana. And we will see all these in greater detail in this very chapter. The gist is that Mother Kaushalya wants to see the far-sighted Bharata to accomplish various purposes. Verse 7 Evam uktva smitram sa vivarna malinambara pratasthe bharata yatra vepamana vichetana she dragged her wasted body and feeble limbs to where he was, pale with grief, demented, while the faithful Sumitra held her up. Verse 8 Satu Rama Nuja Chapi Shatrukna Sahita Tada Prataste Bharata Yatra Koshalyaya Niveshanam and it so chanced that Bharata and Shatrukna were going to her abode to pay their respects to her. Verse 9 Tata Shatrukna Bharata Kaushalyam Preksha Dukkita Paryashvar Jetam Dukkartam Patitam Nashta Chetanam 
ऋदंतौ ऋदती दुखा समेत्यार्यम मनस्विनी The noble-minded Kaushalya was so afflicted with grief that she fell unconscious on the way and was crying pitiably. Her pitiable plight wrung their hearts so much that Bharata and Shatrughna fell on her neck and cried aloud. Here, Valmiki wants us to understand the state of Mother Kaushalya. Of course she is very sad that she lost her husband she is very sad that Ram Sita and Lakshmana are in the forest however he calls her Manasvini the noble minded woman the venerable woman now how can such a highly respected woman and that to the mother of Rama hurt Bharata it is not possible So this is another indication that even though she may speak harsh words in the later verses it's because she wants the world to know who Bharata is there is another reason why she is doing it so sometimes valmiki gives the direct context sometimes he enlightens the readers by giving a subtle context and this is one of the ways in which he gives a very subtle indication but a very strong indication that mother kaushalya is a high souled noble hearted venerable woman even though she was grief stricken even though she was almost semi conscious even though bharata and shatrughna themselves were in great tears and they were lamenting when they approached mother kaushalya valmiki wants the world to know that kaushalya is always a very noble hearted woman kaushalya's actions are not a trifle she gives some great importance to everything that she does we should be very clear about this concept so that we can proceed to the next verse